Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm going to read another little bit from our book Poison Power by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. And the subtitle of it, which was summarily ignored at the time, is called The Case Against Nuclear Power Reactors, or Nuclear Power Plants. <clears throat> okay, so we are on Chapter 6, How Safe Are Nuclear Reactors? And we're at the top of page 163. And it starts. Dr. Edward Teller, often called the father of the hydrogen bomb and one of the most outstanding supporters of the AEC, has stated, A single mishap in a nuclear reactor could cause extreme damage, as we have seen in Fukushima. Not because of the explosive force, but because of the radioactive contamination, again, as we have seen in Fukushima. So far, we have been extremely lucky, but with the spread of industrialization, with a greater number of simian monkeying around with things they did not completely understand, sooner or later, a fool will prove greater than the proof, even in a foolproof system. As seen in the Eugene Register Guard, Oregon, October 7, 1969. On December 10, 1970, in Livermore, California, Dr. Teller told the Livermore chapter of the Society of Professional Engineers that reactors were safe, but they should be put underground. How safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote from a letter of the AEC's Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards concerning a reactor plan for Midland, Michigan. Quote, the number of permanent residents within five miles of the plant site was estimated to be 41,000 in 1968, mainly in the city of Midland and its environs. The applicant has established criteria for and has begun the formulation of a comprehensive emergency evacuation plan. Unquote. In considering the safety of nuclear reactors, it is important to recognize that each reactor, nuclear reactor in this country is an experiment. Each reactor is different from all other reactors, and whether or not it will operate and or operate safely depends on the outcome of the experiment. One of the reasons for this is that the AEC has not funded safety research at an appropriate level. Let me read that again. One of the reasons for this is that the AEC has not funded safety research at an appropriate level. This was recently pointed out by Mr. Joseph Hendry, Chairman of the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards, in a letter to Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, Chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, dated November 12, 1969. I hope this motherfucker Seaborg is burning in hell right now. Dear Dr. Seaborg, The Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeties wishes to re-emphasize some previous recommendations concerning the need for safety research in several important areas in which the effort has not been sufficient. The committee has been recently informed that overall reactor safety funding for, for fiscal year 1970 and 1971 will be considerably below the AEC estimates of need for the Water Reactor Safety Research Program, as well as for the safety research on seismic efforts, on sodium-cooled fast reactors, on high-temperature graphite-moderated gas-cooled reactors, and on environmental effects. As a consequence, many safety reactor activities have not been initiated, have been slowed, or have been terminated. The committee reiterates its belief that the urgent need for additional research and development in these areas and refers to the paragraph below the earlier statements of the committee on these subjects. Unquote. Wow. New subtitle, Water Reactors. In its letter to Mr. Hollingsworth on March 20, 1969, the Atomic Committee on Reactor Safeguards, which is called ACRES, 
stated its belief that more effort should be devoted to gaining an understanding of the modes and mechanisms of fuel failure, possibly propagation of fuel failure, possible propagation of fuel failure, and generation of locally high pressures if hot fuel and coolant are mixed, and that efforts should commence on gaining an understanding of the various mechanisms of potential importance in describing the course of events following a partial or large-scale core melting, either at power or in the unlikely event of a loss of coolant accident." Unquote. <clears throat> The committee has strongly recommended safety research of this kind several times during the last three years. The regulatory staff has also strongly supported such work. However, only small or modest efforts have been initiated thus far. In its comments on March 20, 1969, the committee also recommended that, quote, Considerable attention be given now to the potential safety questions related to large water reactors likely to be proposed for construction during the next decade. Large cores, high power densities, and new materials of fabrication are some of the departures from present practices likely to introduce new safety research needs or major changes in emphasis in existing needs. The committee further recommended that consideration be given to, quote, research aimed specifically at improving the potential for siting of large water reactors in a more populated area than currently being utilized. For example, studies should be undertaken to develop reactor design concepts providing additional inherent safety or possibly new safety features to deal with the very low probability accidents involving primary system ruptured, followed by a functional failure of the emergency core cooling system. Don't you love the way these motherfuckers just talk and double talk? It appears that because of funding limitations and for other reasons, the recommendations of the acres will not be implemented at this time. So, fuck you for safety. Wow. New subtitle. Liquid Metal Cooled Fast Breeder Reactors. LMFBRs. The acres in its report on safety research of November 19, 1963, stated that, quote, recent renewed emphasis on the long-range role of large fast breeder reactors points to the need for a well-developed, long-term, comprehensive research program on the safety of such reactors. A strong research program started now should develop information useful to the first generation of very large reactors." Unquote. The regulatory staff and the acres have recently undertaken a preliminary review of a proposed site to be used for construction of a 500 milliwatt LFMBR. That's the water reactor we're talking about. Con construction permit reviews of one of more LFMBRs are anticipated in the next few years. While an extensive LMFBR safety program plan has been formulated and a growing program in LFMBR safety has been started, many safety-related designs will have to be made by applicants and the regulatory groups without the benefit of needed safety research, in part because of a lag in the implementation of studies of high priority matters. Wow. In summary, the committee again emphasizes the importance of safety research to the protection of the health and safety of the public and urges the adequate funding to be provided to permit timely pursuit of works of all high priority areas. And that was from uh, in the AEC Authorizing Legislation Fiscal Year 1971, Hearings Before the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, 91st Congress, Second, section, second Session, held on March 11, 1970, Washington, D.C., U.S. Government Printing Office, 1970, Part 3, pages 1619 through 1620.
These motherfuckers, they just put shit down in writing and they don't do jack shit. In a letter of November 12, 1969, to Mr. Robert E. Hollingsworth, General Manager of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, Mr. Hendry stated, The water-cooled reactor safety research program in Power Burst Facility should concurrently investigate with high priority the mechanisms and phenomena associated with the initiation, growth, and propagation of fuel pin failure, including the circumstances under which the melting of fuel could progress beyond one fuel element. Such a situation could, re could develop in a large power reactor because of a local reduction in heat removal rate as a biflow blockage a locally abnormal power density as an incorrect enrichment of fuel, or a more widespread perturbation, perturbation in power or flow. These experiments are required in order to ascertain the probability of a local incident progressing into a serious accident, and if possible, the course and consequence of such a sequence of events. That's the IBID, page 1622. These complaints by the AEC's Advisory Committee on Reactor Safety suggest that the present reactors and those under construction are far more experimental than we might have imagined. This is where I start cussing, you guys. It is significant to note, particularly in relationship to the acres' concern over loss of coolant, which it considers as an unlikely event, and Dr. Teller's statement about simians monkeying around that Mr. E. P. Epler discusses an emergency cooling system failure in the Oak Ridge Research Laboratory reactor in July-August 1970 in the issue of Nuclear Safety. In this case, three human errors and four design errors contributed to the incident. In his conclusions, Mr. Epler stated, The errors and failures cited are not individually unusual, although it would, be ordinarily, it would ordinarily be expected that they would be corrected during early operation and system shakedown. Engineered protection systems are not operated routinely, and as a consequence, error and failure modes can lie dormant and unsuspected only to, to appear when emergency operation is required. This, what do you fucking say? Engineered protection systems are not operated routinely? Wow, back to the statement. The incident was not a result of a single failure, but resulted amazingly from seven failures or errors in each of the three identical channels, a total of 21 failures. If any one of these had not occurred, the reactor would not have operated without emergency coolant. Wow. It is also noteworthy that this incident happened in a plant with an outstanding safety and availability record. Unquote. Aside from the chance of a serious accident, these delays in safety research, or its counterpart, proceeding too rapidly with the development of the nuclear energy program, may have forced us into the position where we, we shall have to accept far more risk for our electrical power than necessary. Moreover, we may end up with a less reliable source of power. No shit, Sherlock. The reactors may have to be shut down frequently because of unforeseen engineering problems. For example, in May, on May 14, 1970, in the issue of Nucleonic, Nucleonic Week, there's a fairly long discussion on the problems that developed with furnace-sensitized stainless steel in critical areas of the reactor. This article indicates that trouble was encountered at the reactors at Oyster Creek, Terrapur, Nine Mile Point, and La Crosse. All of those have had fucking serious trouble.
These problems developed in furnace-sensitized stainless steel safe ends and other miscellaneous supports in the reactors. Wow. A somewhat similar problem developed in the, th in the Indian Point Reactor, May 20, 1970, where a small piece of material was found circulating in the cooling water. Since these reactors were constructed to meet critical power needs, it appears quite possible that the brownouts will occur when nuclear reactors fail. The possibility looms larger as we proceed to larger plants, each plant being a significant part of energy supply. I think I'll end here. We're on the top of page 169. New subtitle, Accidents in Fast Breeder Reactors. So I'll come back to this. I'm going to make an effort, you guys, to keep coming back to this sooner than later uh, so we can get through this book. Uh, it is certainly, just like the last book I read, it is certainly inspiring me to get more of an education. Sorry about my hair there. I didn't blow dry it this morning. Um, so... Um, I'll catch you guys tomorrow night. Don't let this information get to you. Let it be a source of power for all of us. This is fuel for thought, and it is up to us to educate ourselves. I hope that you can understand what I'm reading. I really appreciate you guys being back. I love all of you. Thank you so much. And actually, doing this makes me fall in love with life so much more. It just makes me feel love. And... um you know, honestly, it's reminiscent of how I felt when I was a child when I realized I was in a fucking crazy house. Uh, it made me really decide to love life. Like, there's more out there than what... I knew there was more out there than what I had seen. And uh, I'm going to hang on to that because that's what we have to hang on to because there's a lot more love out there than there is fear. So, love you guys and thank you for joining us. And... Uh, Put your courage feet on and let's figure out a way to take action and uh, be the tsunami that stops them. <laughs> Ciao.